the religion tell us that man is, in, is capable of redeeming himself and therefore everyone works out his own heaven and that there will be no hell for no one. The cultists, without exception, have all concocted a plan whereby they and their followers can escape eternal damnation and live joyfully in a better world. Sound pretty good, but it's a lot. This morning, I'm not concerned about what you think about hell. I'm not concerned about what the world thinks about hell. I'm not even concerned about what I think about hell. Our focus today will be what God thinks about hell. Because in the end, it won't matter what you and I think about it. The scriptures will be proven correct. And every philosophy and opinion of man will perish. This morning, we want to talk about the horrors of hell. Yeah. And if you're on the pathway there, maybe this sermon will be a wake-up call to you and give you an opportunity to do something okay. Right. Okay. when we open the doors of the church. Right. Uh -huh. If you're saved, it's a reminder that billions are hell-bound as we speak. And we have an obligation to do everything we can through the gospel of Jesus Christ to deter them from spending eternity in such an awful place. Well, I think that in our modern times, there's not enough preaching about it. Yeah. Yeah. I think people would live better if they sincerely considered that there's a literal place that burns with fire and brimstone. Well, all right, all right. There's a place called hell where the worm never dies. And this phrase, phrase, where the worm never dies, is described in Isaiah 66, 24, and pictured by Jesus in Mark 9. The picture is of magnets that are quite naturally associated with the rotting filth of a garbage pile. And the fact that the worm never dies means it's eternal. So the bodies of those in hell will be like rotting corpses that have worms in them to serve as a perpetual presence of their eternally decayed condition. All right, all right. Hell is a place where there's weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. The pain will be so intense that your teeth will grind together in agonizing pain well, throughout eternity. The weeping and wailing will be loud and unending. Yeah. And yet you can do nothing about it because you will be joining in the chorus of those who are wailing in Well, it was never God's intention that we as humans would go to hell because hell was intended for Lucifer and all his hosts. Yeah. And even today, God sends no one to hell. Uh, but you end up in hell when you refuse God's invitation yeah. to accept his love for you through his son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Today, if you're in this church and you're hearing this sermon, that you're a Christian, you don't, uh, you, don't, you don't have to worry about it. You should rejoice. But if you're not a Christian, you ought to hurry down the aisle and accept Christ as your Savior and Lord because I promise you, you, you might not like me, you might not like Mount Olive, you might not like some members here, but, but I promise you, you're never going to like him. Yeah. Yeah. Hell is a horrible place. Yeah. And it must be because God would come down himself in the person of Jesus Christ to keep us from going there. Wow. Yeah. There's some theories about hell that has just not made hell disappear from uh, the yeah. church discussion. Well, well. Mm -hmm. Church doctrine is no longer heavy on hell. Well. Because we believe that if you're sincere enough, Jesus doesn't have to be your Savior. Well, just be sincere yeah. and you're yeah. going to yeah. But it's possible to be sincerely wrong. Yeah. Think about this. Suppose you have a baby that's coughing at night. And you get up to get him or her some cough medicine. And you're tired and worn out and bumping into stuff you can hardly see. And you reach in the medicine cabinet and intend to, get, to give your child some Vicks cough medicine. But you give them some poison. Now, you didn't mean to do it. Yeah. You were sincerely trying to relieve the cough, but you were sincerely and deadly wrong. All right, all right. 
And there's some people here today who will end up in hell. Sincerely wrong. Hell is not popular to talk about. Hell is not popular to preach about. More than likely, no one will be shouting on this sermon. Well, well, well. The only time some of us mention hell is when we tell somebody else to go there. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. But because hell is not popular, does not mean that hell is not popular. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. And so in the text, uh, there's a rich man who wore purple and fine hair. Yeah. King James said that he fared sumptuously every day. Wow. He lived lavishly. He, he feasted every day. Yes, yep. And we need to know from the outset that, that he doesn't go to hell because he's rich. Mm -hmm. That's right. And Lazarus doesn't go to heaven because he's poor. Yeah. Riches will not send you to hell. Yeah. God has nothing against us possessing things. Right. He just does not want things to possess us. Wow. Yeah. Riches and being wealthy and having plenty will not send you to hell. Solomon was one of the richest People have not been richest of all time. Yeah. He was so rich that if you gave Solomon a silver cup, or in our case, a styrofoam cup, you get your head cut off. Yeah. He drank out, out of only gold goblets. Uh, so you don't have to walk around not getting your hair done, thinking that, that you're being spiritual. As a sign of being spiritual, I don't get my hair done. I'm trying to go to heaven. <laughs> You don't have to get your face painted and wear long dresses to go to hell. Uh, we need to understand you can go to hell from the choir stand. You can go to hell uh, opening the door for people every Sunday as a man. You can go to hell teaching Sunday school. You can go to hell coming to church every Sunday because if Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, you're lost and on your way to a burning hell. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you do in church. Even preach. It doesn't matter what you do in church. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we get caught up in the uh, trappings of church. Yeah. The activities and events and involvement. Yeah. And forget about who really needs to be involved yeah. in our life. Yeah. God has called me to preach. Yeah. God has called all of us to witness. Yeah. And it's our duty to keep everybody we can from going to hell. Yes, because it's a torturous Horrible place. The rich man feasted lavishly every day, but the poor man lay at his gate, longing to eat the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Mm -hmm. And in those days, they didn't have napkins to wipe their hands as we have today. They took yeah. pieces of bread that was baked and ready to eat, yeah. and they wiped their hands on the bread and threw it on the floor. Uh -huh. And the dog would eat the bread that they wiped their hands on. Well. And Lazarus uh, wanted uh, the bread that had been wiped by the hands of the rich man's guests. Well, but the rich man wouldn't even give him that. But then the dogs came and licked Lazarus' sores. Yeah. He found more compassion from dogs than he did the rich man. Well, he believed uh, that dogs promoted healing by licking Lazarus' sores. Yeah. You do know that dog saliva contains the antibacterial enzyme called lysozine, yeah. which stimulates the skin around the wound. And as the dogs lick, it would increase the healing blood properties that flow to the infected area. Yeah. Right. Dogs, if you notice, even lick their own wounds yeah. Yeah. to encourage them to heal. So it's interesting to note that, that dogs are not well spoken of in the Bible. They're used as metaphors for those who are unbelievers and Gentiles. Dogs were considered detestable and unclean. But while Lazarus was ill-treated by the rich man, the dogs, by licking his sword, showed him more compassion what? in the absence of human relief. Yeah, yeah. We ought to be careful how we treat people. Yeah. Yeah. It should never be said of us that a dog has been more kind to our fellow man yeah. than we have. Yeah. Well, yeah. But then as time progresses, okay. both the rich man and Lazarus die. Yes. Death, in so many cases, serves as the great equalizer. Well. Because all of us come here with nothing. Yeah. And all of us are leaving here with nothing. Yeah. As I say sometimes at funerals, there'll be no U-Hauls at the graveyard. There'll be no uh, semis uh, with all of your stuff in it following the hearse at the graveyard. Your family and your friends are going to argue and fuss and cuss 
over who gets the TV yet? Who gets the DVD player? Who gets the car? Who gets the house? Who gets the clothes? Who gets the shoes? Who gets the refrigerator? Who gets the stove? What they call it? And the main one, who gets the money? As a little, as a little rabbit trail. Mom Mabley said that her husband said he's gonna cancel the life insurance policy. He said, well, I, I want it to be a sad day for everybody. <laughs> Lazarus dies and is angelically transported to Abraham Bush. Then rich man in hell lifted up his eyes and says, Follow Abraham. Yes, sir. So Lazarus over here to dip his finger in some water and cool my tongue. And this man, he got a lot of nerve. This man, in particular, got a lot of nerve. He's trying to have Lazarus serve him while he's in hell. Abraham said, I can't do it, man. There's a golf fix between you and us. And we can't get to where you are, and you can't get to where we are. He said, well, Abraham, I'm begging you. Send him to my father's house. I got five brothers. Let them warn them so they won't come to this place of torment. Yes. But Abraham said they got Moses and the prophets. Right. They should listen to them. Yeah. The rich man said, no, Father Abraham, if someone from the dead goes to them, they'll repent. Well, Abraham, in my little old paraphrase thing, says here, we're not going to do anything spectacular. They'll have, they'll have to hear preaching. Yeah. And if they don't hear Moses and the prophets, they won't be impressed if someone rises from the dead. Well, well, well. Now that's the story of Luke. But let me give you the horrors of hell as graphically as I know how. So let us know what hell is all about. First of all, there's relational torment in hell. In hell, there are no relationships. Hell will be full of people, but nobody will know anybody. Yeah. You won't be looking over somebody waving, hey girl, how you doing? Yeah. Right. No, nobody will fellowship in hell. Nobody will have intimate contact in hell because the horror of hell is that there will be no relationships throughout eternity. Well, No AKA organizations in hell. Yeah. No Delta meetings in hell. Yeah. No cute all step shows in hell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no Mason or Eastern Star sign ups in hell. Well. No worthy matrons or uh, worshipful masters in hell. Well. No dancing in hell. No drugs or drinking. Uh, no parties. Uh, people talk about it, yeah, I'm going to party in hell. No, you're not. <laughs> but day and night, forever, there's torment uh, and nobody to talk to. With all the people that will be there, there's nobody to relate to. And there you'll be in the lake of fire, yep. full of people, yep. yet all alone. You'll be in perpetual torment forever. Yeah. The relationships you enjoy here on earth with your sister won't happen in hell. <laughs> the shopping you do with your friends and family won't happen in hell. Well, there are no malls in hell. Well, uh, the relationship you have with your father or mother or frat brother or sorority sister won't happen in hell. Well, because in hell, nobody relates to nobody. Well, uh, not only is there torment relationally, but secondly, there's spiritual torment. <laughs> there's no God in hell. There's no spirit in hell. Mm -hmm. There's no praise in hell. No. There's no worship in hell. No. There's no hallelujah in hell. No. There's no hand clapping in hell. No. There's no fellowship of the saints in hell. No. There's spiritual death. No God. Yes. No invitation to discipleship. Yes. No choir singing. No, re no choir rehearsing. Right no children giving praise to God. No old person giving a prayer and no young person reading a Bible. Well, There's nothing spiritual in hell. Well, it's void of the spirit because God will not be present. Yeah. And wherever God is not, my there is no spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And every once in a while, I want to hear some singing. Yeah. I used to hear the old song up above my head. I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. Place where God is not. No peace. No joy. No love. No contentment. No happiness. No smiles. No mercy. No faith. No favor. No power. I don't want to be in a place like this. It's hard to preach in churches that have no spirit. I don't want to walk into a house.
hearts, then there's no joy. Yeah. When people don't like each other and don't speak to each other. Yeah. And you can feel that coldness yeah. when you get around. Yeah. But in hell, there's no such thing, not even an opening here for prayer. Yeah. Yeah. There's no devotion or praise and no. worship here. No. For those that are going there, they chose to worship the devil while they lived on earth. Yeah. God is not prayer. It's not only relational, not only uh, no spiritual, it's torment forever. But then the fourth of hell is emotional torment. Wow. Well, well, well. Because the frightening word in this text is what Abraham said to the man. And that word is remember. Where the sisters in hell, you will have perfect recall. You remember every sermon you heard. Every invitation you turn down to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You, you are remembered. You remember all those Sundays where you were, we're going to come up. But you let pride sit you down and talk you into waiting wow. until next week. Yeah. You remember every opportunity you had to hear the gospel in church when you fell asleep. Every time God wanted to talk to you, you became fatally distracted. You got a bump or a buzz on your cell phone. You had to catch up with the latest gossip on Facebook. Uh -huh. And you got detracted from what the preacher was saying. Yeah. Your buzz on your phone again, somebody texting you, talking about why she got a green purse with an orange dress and blue shoes. <laughs> and you're sitting little emojis just laughing and giggling. <laughs> Every time you had a chance to worship, you took time to stay home because you were tired. Remember? When you should have been at Bible study, when you should have been building on your faith, when you should have been praising God and giving him the glory for the good things he's done in your life, but you decided to work overtime. Remember? When you could have helped somebody, you could have lifted somebody's burden, but you wanted to keep your money for yourself. Remember? When somebody asked you to pray for them, but you didn't have time to stop because of your busy life. Remember? When you could have told somebody about Jesus, but you had a previous engagement because somebody invited you to happy hour at Smiley's. Remember? Yeah. I remember when you were young and full of energy and could have given God your best, but you got strung out chasing the ghosts. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. When, when God blessed you with all the stuff you needed to go to church, you had clothes and car and cash, a cottage in the country. You had a job and food, but you refused to acknowledge his blessing. Remember? Yeah. The power of the floor of hell is physical. Yeah. In hell, you'll be tortured and burning for hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People who get burned, that's a terrible way to die. That's a terrible way. People get burned in general, their skin begins to decay and die. Yes, sir. So in burn units at the hospital, they, they have to scrape off the dead skin so that hopefully some other skin can be grafted in. And that scraping process is painful. And sometimes the bones and muscles are exposed. Yes. But in hell, there's no scraping off their skin. That's right. Because you're constantly, endlessly, and hopelessly in pain. Can you feel that? Well, yeah. Nobody to attend to your wounds. Yeah. Nobody to take your arm up to it and, and have them put a dressing on it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all you have is loud screams. Yeah. Nobody to look for. Nobody. It. Your tongue is going to cleave to your mouth. Yes. No opportunity just for a drop of water. Yes. Your hair, your ears, your body is constantly on fire. Yes. And it won't last until you pass out. Because you won't be able to pass out. Yes. It's going to last forever. Yes. Somebody said, how can you reason a loving God with a burning head? Yes. They say God is too loving and too kind to send anybody to such a horrible place. Yes. He doesn't send anybody to hell. Amen. You go to hell because you reject his son. You go because you don't accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. But you got an opportunity today to change the course of your eternal destiny by receiving Christ into your life today. Today you can say no to hell and yes to God. But if you don't turn around, you're on your way to hell. Yeah. Someone might be saying, well, Pastor, how can I stay out of this place? I, I don't want to go to a place where worms never die. Yeah. I don't want to go to a place where I'm totally and hopelessly and endlessly tortured forever. Yeah. Uh, I can't get no rest. Yeah. Uh, and then there's no death in hell. Well, you can't die. Yeah. You can't get it over with. You can't pull up a revolver out of your pocket and 
blow your brains out because you're already dead. You can't get out of it. You can't run from it. There's, there's no door. There's no exit. You can't turn it off. Uh, you can't turn it down. Uh, you, you can't ask nobody to, to bring you uh, a glass halfway full of water. There's no door. There's no window. There's no basement exit. There, there's no exit at all. There's no air conditioning. Uh, and there's no death. And perhaps there's somebody today that said, look, I, I want to stay out of here. Uh, one day, there was a baby born in Bethlehem, real in Nazareth, brought up in Jerusalem, baptized in the Jordan River. He healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, made lame men to walk, made dumb men to speak. I said, there's a baby. Yeah. Who grew up and found favor with God and man. Yes. You were born of a verse. Yes. Came down through 42 generations. Yes. Stopped off in Bethlehem of Judea and let himself be born. Yes. The Bible says a child is born. What? But a son is given. Yes. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Yes, sir. Isaiah goes on to tell us that his name shall be called one yes. yes. Counselor. Yes. The mighty God. The everlasting father, yes, the prince of peace. The Bible says that he is the day spring of Israel. He's the ancient of David. He's the fairest of ten thousand. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. The Bible says in Genesis 3, verse 15, that the seed of the woman shall crush the head of the serpent, and the serpent shall bruise his heel. Yeah, yeah. You know who? That seed he is? He's the son of David. Seed of Abraham. Joseph was his earthly father, but had nothing to do with